All right. Uh, this is going to be a little bit longer of a video, but I'm hoping to show you guys a little bit more step by step on this product. Uh, today I've got the Rocks um, brake light kit for the Yamaha Drive. Uh, Rocks uh, already put out a video on how to install this, but uh, for me, I felt like they kind of left out some um, some views and some extra information. Uh, that would have been nice to know, but I kind of bought it uh, just because I want to commit to doing this and it's something for you guys to see. Um, so it came with uh, brackets, pins, uh, a plunger switch, a timed uh, relay. And what this does is uh, traditionally you have this rubber uh, brake pad here and I've shown this in one of my earlier earliest videos on this channel. Um, this came with the Jake's light kit uh, in the wiring harness. This loom comes up and it came out of the uh, the floor panel and you just kind of mount this to the pedal and when you step on it uh, there's two copper plates parallel to each other underneath here and then there are two more parallel copper plates that hover above the lower pair and when you step on it you're pushing the two copper pads together creating this uh, you know uh, closing the circuit and let's see if I can show this turning on the brake light now what I have found is that after having this for I think about two and a half years now um, one of the copper contacts in here is not making contact when I push on it so it has to be on the right side and I've also found that I have to push on this pretty stiff with my foot with my finger up in the corner here it makes a very nice easy contact but when I push my foot on here it's not turning the lights on unless I push really hard but in doing so I'm uh, making the golf cart come to a very hard and quick stop so it's either I brake really hard to get the lights to turn on or I brake lightly and everything's fine but my brake lights don't turn on now the replacement for this thing is I think like 20 bucks um, but I had problems with it right out of the right out of the box I, I managed to kind of peel some of the rubber back and get it to work but it's just it's failing on me um, so that's why I've gone to this light kit, which is all mounted uh, back underneath the, the floorboard and is integrated into the brake mechanism. Uh, and it works just like a car brake pad and brake light switch works where it's all based on the, uh, the pedal, pedal being depressed and um, not relying on a pad that has contacts in it. So um, I'm going to wait to take this off uh, at the very end um, just for the sake of time. Uh, but what you're first going to want to do, and I'm sorry, like I said before, the video to install this uh, is on the Rocks YouTube channel. It's uh, this company right here, RHOX, and that's actually who I got the lift kit from, the, the six inch lift. So um, let me put this down. And uh, first thing that we're gonna do is behind the brake pedal here, these two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull those out. All right, now that the uh, bolts are removed there, uh, you're probably going to find that this area is just full of very fine dust, uh, like silt. It's just the, the dirt that the golf cart kicks up is able to come up in here. So um, I took some time to kind of take a paper towel before I took the bolts out and try to clean it up. But that's about as clean as it's going to get because I can't really get my hand in here because of the brake line. Um, so let's talk about the next step. And that is the switch bracket. Now when it comes from rocks, let's set this down here, it has this plate, go ahead and do this. it's on, it's going to be on the back side of this bracket here, uh, you can kind of see where it was originally put onto the edge here. 
rocks uh, specifically states that you have to remove this part of the bracket, and I'll explain how to tell the difference in a second, this part of the bracket if you're installing it on a G29 or Yamaha drive. This bracket, this part of the bracket will interfere with the, um, the panel, the access panel going back on. So in their video, they show the guy grabbing some uh, metal shears and he was cutting it off uh, the, the backside here. Now, when I finally got this in my hand, I noticed that all this is one continuous piece of metal and that the side flanges with the circles on them are tack welded. Uh, so there's, there's one in the corner here, there's one right here, there's one right here. So uh, instead of trying to use metal shears or uh, a hacksaw or a grinding wheel or a cutoff wheel, um, I just took my time and I just started wiggling it and uh, flexing those little tack welds and it finally broke off. So I have a much cleaner edge and uh, since this is steel, I went ahead and took some Herca liner from Advance Auto and sprayed it on there so that way this doesn't rust. So that's how I did mine. I feel like if you can, if you have the hand strength to just kind of wiggle it back and forth and work it off, uh, the end product is a lot better. Now, they state this in the video, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure I say it too. Their install video says that this cutout right here has to be facing towards the back of the golf cart. So it's going to install like so. They want you to remove the panel, the piece that I took off that slid down here, is going to be the one that's furthest back. So you have this 90 degree front with the hole mount for the, uh, for the plunger and um, the panel that's on the back side of that has to come off. And that is going to mount in there like that. And you notice how the holes line up. And mind you, that cutout is still facing backwards. And you can see how by taking that rear flat bar off, it's able to get into the corner here. So that's why they have you take that off. Um, now as far as mounting it with these holes that allow you to slide forward and back, um, I'm not sure what the correct position is for me. It might differ for you and your golf cart, but uh, I'm going to put the bolts on, leave it just a little bit loose so I can slide it, and uh, I'll, I'll finish tightening those down uh, at the end. Let me pause the video and go ahead and do that. Okay, you can see I've got both bolts in there and uh, the bracket fits nicely right in here. There's not a lot of room, so I mean it's a very nice, well thought out, tight fit. Um, I have a little bit of motion to play with going back and forth, but like I said, I'm not sure where that's supposed to be set just yet. Uh, and once again, I'm following their instructional video, but for me, I feel like I'm hitting the key points that are left out and might be useful to someone who is trying to do this, um, considering I didn't really find any other videos um, installing this piece of equipment. So, uh, next thing to do is install the pin, which is going to be the anchoring point for the spring uh, and where the plunger pulls on, or is pulled at. So this pin is going to replace this shackle pin here that's pulling your brake line. And um, you can see that they've got a, a, a cotter pin, just the shackle, and the brake pedal. So um, this comes with uh, two metal washers, uh, the cotter pin, and these nylon washers here. And what that does is, you can see from the factory there's a gap right here. Um, there's a little bit of a gap at, at every at every position so they give you these washers here these nylon washers to fill in that gap so it's a, a tighter fit and doesn't want to move side to side um, so I'm gonna pause the video and put the pin in and then we'll, we'll come back to you all right something else to point out too when you pull the, the pin out I've got this pedal pushed back towards the back of the golf cart as much as I can 
but you see how the brake has relaxed a little bit. The cable tension is no longer there, so this no longer lines up at a resting state. So what that means is to get this back, I'm probably gonna have to get a screwdriver, stick it in here and kind of pull it in line and get it lined up and you know shove the pin through. So um, note to self, if you're doing this and um, you don't have a lot of hand strength or um, not a lot of arm strength to try and get this back in, just know that once you pull this pin, this is not going to be an easy reinstall or, or put it back to the way you had it. So just be aware of that if, if that's a point of concern for you. Okay, so uh, I've got this installed in now. Uh, so what I did, now th there may be a manual out there that shows you how to install this and uh, you know, I might be doing a video redundantly and um, you know, this <laughs> This information might already be out there, but this is what I'm finding and this is how I'm installing it. I haven't, I've only looked at their install video, but they didn't really talk about this part. They just said install it. So, um, like I said, it comes with two metal washers and then five nylon washers. Now, um, you notice how I'm using the nylon washers here to take up space, you know, so that this, this shackle doesn't move left and right. So what I've done is I've done a nylon washer, a metal washer, the shackle, a nylon washer, the brake pedal, nothing in between there, then you have the shackle, and then you have another metal washer, and then the cotter pin. The reason I did it this way was because, um, one, I saw their video show that they put the nylon washer on the driver side of the brake pedal. We're gonna say this is the passenger side and this is the driver side. They put a nylon washer there and they only used one. But the reason I have another one here at the very beginning is because this pin was still able to slide back and forth the width of that nylon washer. The reason I did that was because the pin here is really close to your throttle return spring. I'm sorry, this is your uh, no, that is the throttle return spring. This is your gas pedal return spring. It doesn't quite touch. It's very close, but I didn't want this to slide over anymore. And by having it pulled back as far as I can this way, it also lines up better here with this groove to the hole where the plunger goes. That's gonna be the next step. So give me just a minute and I'll put the plunger in and the spring on and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now I've got the plunger in, and um, you know they talk about this and show this a little bit more detail on their video, but when you put the plunger in, there's a locking collar that once it pops through the hole, it has these tangs that stick out that keep it from falling out backwards. The spring comes down and hooks over the pin that we just installed into that groove that's set furthest away uh, from the cotter pin. So you can see how this avoids hitting um, the existing brake um, assembly. I mean, this is a big hunk of aluminum. So they've got this coming in, missing any big pieces of hard equipment there. Now, this is why I've left the bracket loose and this collar rotates, allowing, and, and this is based on the same idea like I showed in my tuning the golf cart video, just like the gas, uh, the gas line or the gas cable adjustment and the brake line adjustment. And that is, as you turn this nut, it's pushing this plunger away, making this gap bigger and in turn pulling on it. So this is just the, root, uh, the crude idea here, is when you push the pedal, you can see, and watch the, the brass tongue right there, you can see how that gets pulled out. That is what turns your brake lights on. So when you hit the gas, or the, I'm sorry, the brake, and you push down, it turns the brake lights on. And there's no rubber pad or anything to uh, essentially fail because of rubber. Um, this is a solid mechanical pull contact. So you can move 
this bracket forward and back a little bit based on what adjustment you need and the same thing with this collar I can turn it and make this plunger move back um, and and this is all in uh, this is all for adjusting it so that the brake lights turn on as soon as you hit the uh, the brake itself so that way I don't have to stomp on this thing to get the lights to turn on and I don't have the car behind me crashing into the back uh, so this is going to um, this is going to be adjustment that I'm going to need to make after I got everything wired up uh, so that I know where it is engaged and then in turn I can make adjustments as needed so let's talk about the wiring real quick so it came with the plunger and um, not that I have a lot of experience with this but I think that plunger is pretty standard and you can easily find a replacement at AutoZone or Advance Auto from what I've seen on the shelf I think so so if that's the case props to them for thinking about quick easy replacement if that switch goes bad uh, part of the kit that they give you let's go ahead and get rid of this because we don't need that anymore along with the pin and cotter pin we won't need those they give you this uh, little adapter here now if you go with the uh, rocks light uh, their their light kit with their loom this is an adapter to go from these bullet connectors which come standard on uh, the plunger switch and the re the timed relay here and this is a connection that plugs right into to their system now since I have a Jake's light uh, light kit this is irrelevant for me so part number LGT162 and I if I remember correctly this whole kit is LGT164 um, that's their part number on their website for the whole kit and then they've got sub parts with their part number um, and they come in these little bags to differentiate so this is useless to me let's go ahead and set that aside um, that contained one part that I don't remember. So, all that we need to do is hook um, this timed relay to the plunger to our harness. And this was something that made me super happy, and that is that I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this if I can. Come on. All right, hold on. Okay, doing that, doing that one-handed was um, impossible. So, um, the Jigs light kit came with these bullet connectors, and uh, the the little rubber pad only used uh, the bullet connectors, and it left this spade connection um, free to go to nothing. And um, you know that made me a little confused, and I'm going, well, you know, why in the world would they they add that there? It just didn't make sense. So uh, when I got this kit, it, it clicked for me. And that was, even though they're different manufacturers, they are still wiring their stuff with a uh, kind of a standard uh, connection system. So while I don't need that adapter, they it's almost like they need an adapter to go to their own system, but if you just buy this and you have somebody else's light kit, it's already wired for you. It's already ready to be connected. I don't need to cut and splice any wires. So, um, in their video, and th this is kind of where I wanted to be able to give an, a real good uh, you know, consumer viewpoint. Their video shows everything being hooked up with their system. This is me hooking it up with two different people's systems. And um, let's let's go ahead and start talking about what this timed relay does. If we were to hook these wires, which is just a positive and negative, to the plunger assembly, and we hit the 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 brake, the lights are going to turn on. It's going to work perfectly. The issue is is that when you go to set the parking brake, now all of a sudden 
your plunger is pulled 100% of the time. So, you know, you can't have this. Uh, it would run your battery down and your golf cart would have brake lights on all the time when you had the parking brake on. So, to combat this, they gave you a timed relay switch. And what this does to the system is when you press the, um, the brake pad, the, the brake lights are going to turn on and off. But when you set your parking brake, the lights are going to stay on for, I think I read somewhere, for two minutes. So the, the brake lights are going to stay on for two minutes. After two minutes, this is going to turn off the system. It's going to turn off the rear brake lights. So that means I can set my parking brake and not run my battery dead and not have my brake lights on every single time the parking brake's on. So that's why this is included and that's why I thought this system was so cool and so well thought out. It's also way more protected in here than having these wires, you know, come up as you guys saw before, just come out out of the floor. It looks better, it's cleaner, it's safer, self-contained, a lot better than this rubber pad. I really like this system. So, um, I need to consult the video real quick to figure out which wire goes where. So I'm going to do that. I suggest watching their video to for them to show you uh, which wire goes where. And uh, I'll show you where I connected mine. I'm not going to say that this is an exact how-to and what you're supposed to connect because your system may be different. Um, but I'm just going to show you what I found. All right, so I got it wired up and um, I already checked to make sure that it works. So I made sure that when I press the uh, brake that the lights instantly turn on and when I engage the parking brake that after two minutes that the rear uh, that the brake lights would turn off and it worked and I can't tell you how happy I am this is awesome something I also forgot to mention on the negative wire on the plunger there is a 10 amp uh, micro fuse in here so it's a fuse that you can go get from uh, Advance Auto, AutoZone, O'Reilly's but it's a micro fuse it's the really tiny ones while the rest of the golf cart uses the standard uh, standard size fuses. So this is going to be one that I throw into my storage along with the other backup fuses. Um, uh, you can check out uh, the other video I did under practical storage of what I keep on the golf cart in case of emergencies uh, as far as mecha mechanical stuff goes. Um, so I'm going to go get a uh, another fuse that I can have as a backup just in case. So. Like I said uh, before pausing this, their wiring harness uses the adapter and they were referencing a brown wire to their brown wire which is in their system. I don't have a brown wire. I have a yellow wire, I have a red wire and a black wire. So, um, you know, common knowledge and most you know industry standard is that red is positive and black is negative. Well, when you throw in other colors like yellow and brown, you can't assume that it's positive or negative, so you need to make sure you know what you're hooking up to. So, refer, refer, refer to their video on how to hook this up. But for me, this is just for me, this is not a how-to video, this is what I found. Starting with the relay, the red wire goes to the red wire on the plunger. So red to red and they were already had uh, bullet connectors here, so just a simple click in, no big deal. The black wire off the relay, following the black wire, goes to that black wire on the, this is the Majax loom, to my black wire here. And this was the wire I was saying that I had no idea what it was used for. It seemed irrelevant. but. They use a blade connection and the female end, and it fits in there perfectly. It's almost like they planned this, guys. So that was a very nice connection there. The, the brown wire, this is the one that confused me because I don't have a brown wire on this loom. The brown wire connects to the yellow wire on mine. Now, for me, it was a little interesting to notice that um, the brown went to yellow 
Uh, or let me just say that the brown went to my yellow wire, which is the positive, which is a positive, and I don't fully understand that because the last red wire from the loom went directly to the black wire on the plunger. Red to black, uh, that it, it doesn't make sense. Brown to yellow, sure, that'll work because it's non, it's a non-standard color for positive and negative. So. Like I said, that's that's why I'm saying this is not a how-to video. This is more of just what I have on my golf cart. And once again, it's a Magex light kit and a Rox uh, pedal brake light switch kit. So um, the other clue that was given to me that this was the correct way to plug it in was that on the negative side of the plunger was a male bullet connector and the brown wire on the relay side of things was a female bullet connector so male to female male to female it seemed to logically line up I double checked it with a multimeter and then confirmed it when I pushed the brake pedal uh, it, it turns on and when I engage the parking brake after two minutes it cuts the lights off so I've wired it correctly now the only thing left to do is kind of tuck this away and uh, you know uh, adjust this and tighten down the bolts make sure it's adjusted correctly i've already kind of played with it just a little bit so that and i'll show you guys because this was actually a comment that i left under their page and that was i wish i got to see the product work so i'm going to show you guys when you pull this it pulls the plunger so we are going to pull this and this is the best I can do. When I push the brake pedal down, you can see that the brake light comes on. Every time I'm pushing it down, it turns on. Every time I lift it up, it turns off. So we know that just the action of braking is working. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to push this down. You're going to hear the parking brake engage and you're going to see the lights stay on. Okay. Parking brake is on, it's locked back, and the brake lights are on. We're going to go around here. Psst, psst, psst. Come here. Good girl. This is Harley. I think I showed her in the last video. They've, they've gotten big. And Rosie. Rosie. We had a great time at the beach. Oh, and uh, you have to work on your golf cart with the matching Crocs. That's a got to. So you notice the uh, brake lights are still on. I haven't relieved the uh, the parking brake yet. Yeah, I, I use the back of my golf cart for the working space when I'm working on it. So uh, we're just killing two minutes. That's all we're doing. Je hey, hey, gentle. Gentle. <laughs> Need the um, Jeopardy countdown time theme song going on. I, I'm, I'm not trying to waste y'all's time. I really want y'all to see that this auto cuts off. There it is. So it cut off. And the brake is still engaged. The parking brake is still on. So you can see that it was it was the parking brake was engaged. The lights were on. After two minutes, it cuts out. So that way, it doesn't kill the battery. It doesn't burn out your lights. It takes care of itself. And then, of course, when you release the brake, it's not engaging. And then I go right back to touching the brake itself, and the light turns on like a normal car, like a car works. Fantastic. I, I mean, rocks nailed it. They, they hit it right out of the park with this kit. It's easy. It's simple. Well done. Well thought out. They provided everything in there. If, if, if you guys want to do it right, in my opinion, do this. I love this kit and I hope rock sees this. I hope they, they know that I'm giving them a thumbs up on this. It's fantastic. And it's all put away clean. Look, 
simple and easy. I know this is a long video, uh, 30 minutes long, but I really wanted to show you guys this. It's some, this is an upgrade that I'm, uh, I, I really think is worth getting. And I'm also doing it because I wanted to show some more detail and formative stuff that I felt like they left out. Not, not complaining against them. I just want to make sure that their product is, is seen, um, the best way it can be viewed. So, uh, other side note. Taking off the steering wheel from that quick release is fantastic when you're working here so you're not racking your head on the steering wheel all the time. So uh, it's all you know we'll count that as a we'll count that as a plus. Only thing left to do is just clean this up, put the the panel over it, put the rubber mat over, and there's nothing to see. For me, I just gotta take this back off. Thank you guys. Thank you for uh, viewing this video. Um, I've got some more stuff coming up. I got some news today um, about uh, a product that I've talked about before. It's going to be coming. Um, it's going to be coming to life here soon. Uh, I know I've mentioned this in a video before, but I don't remember the ruck rack. I am going to do a um, a separate video on this. The company has been moving forward. I've been in contact with the um, uh, with the lead designer, and um, they're going to be starting up on Kickstart. That is going to be a very cool product that I will be adding to the golf cart. That will be the main showcase there. Um, but more about that later. Look for that to come, and um, I hope this was helpful for somebody, or at least to see a different product out there or what a product can do. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good one.